Hi guys, Wandersun here. In this video I will teach you how to customize buttons using QML and basic JavaScript functions. Let's start using a blank design to make it easier to understand. See that some controls are missing. To add the controls just import in QML imports the module QD Quick Controls in version 2.15. We can just click and drag a button to our window, but I'm going to teach you how to make these buttons customizable. Let's go to the control square and create a new file. This file should always start with your name in uppercase. Change the initial version of the module to 2.15, and we will also add the new module called QT Quick Controls 2.15, done that we will start to write our button. I'll start by changing the width of the preview screen to 200 and its height to 40, adding text and also an ID. Now let's change the background color of this button, to change the color just add a rectangle inside the object, background, and add a color. Sometimes QT Creator does not automatically update your design, to do this manually just click on edit and right after clicking on design this will update the software interface. Don't forget to always save your script after some change. To add we will have to import our created button, we will do this by opening main QML file and going to the text editor tab. Type import QML slash controls so QD creator will recognize the QML files that are in the folder. Now going to form editor we can already see it but our button however it still has no defined width and height. Let's do this by adding the following commands and leaving the width as 200 and its height as 40. The implicit width or implicit height object is a predefined width or height for our button. Going to the form editor tab we can see that the width and height has been set and we will also center this button on the screen and see that the text color doesn't match. Let's go back to our text editor and change the text color to white. With object content item we can modify the existing items inside the button, we will use this object to change the color of our text by creating a new text. Now we take the ID of our button and look for the text object of that button. Put the color as white and center the text on the screen. Let's run our project and see that our button is already getting as we want. I'll add a slightly rounded border to this button, and when we run our application we can see how it will look. See that we now have a button with a modern design. We will now create customizable properties. These properties have types of which we can assign values or functions to them. Let's start by creating a color property where we'll be responsible for the main color of our button. Right after we will define a color for when the mouse is over our button. And finally we will define the color of our button when it is clicked. I will create a new object for our button, 
that object will be responsible for containing the function that when the mouse is over the button or clicked will change its color. This object will be of type var, and I will call it dynamic color. Let's create a function saying that if the button is clicked it will change to color, color pressed otherwise it will return the color, color default. Otherwise we will check if the mouse is on the button if it is, it will change to color for color mouse over. For this to work we must add this object that we created to our background, do it as in the video adding internal.dynamic color to rectangle. Now if we run our application we see that now the mouse over effect and click effect is working correctly. When we create new properties for our controls these properties are displayed on the main window of our project, so we can customize these options directly from our main window. Now that we have learned the basics of how to customize our button let's go back to our main project and continue editing. Let's start by creating a new file that will be responsible for our button. Start by changing the version of Qt Quick to version 2.15. Add the module Qt graphical effects in version 1.15. Delete the existing item and we will start to write our button. Let's set the width to 70 and height to 60. Let's add a background color just like we did in the previous project. But this time we will add an image, that image will be responsible for the icon of our button. I will now choose the icon for this button, these SVG images will be available on GitHub, and I will leave the link in the description of this video. Let's center this icon both horizontally and vertically. Put the height of the icon as 25, its width as 25. And the fill mode put as described in the video image preserve aspect fit. To update the Qt creator interface just do as we did previously. Let's change the color of our button to the same color as our top bar, to do that just go to the main QML project and copy the existing colors.
Done that, we will change the color of our icon. We will use a color overlay effect where it will be possible to add the color we want. We will use anchoring by the ID of our image and also the source. Let's set the color of the button to white. Let's disable anti-aliasing and run our application. See that they will still be old button in our application. We will update this now to our custom toggle button. We go to our main QML file. Click on the button then we go to text editor. Done this we replace the existing button for our customizable button. See that an error happens, to solve this problem just import the pass of our controls as we did previously. Now that our button is imported correctly, we will add the effects of mouse over and mouse click. Let's add a property called URL that will be responsible for the address of our icon. Now add the customizable properties as we did previously for color default, mouse over and color clicked. We will create an internal object just as we did in the previous project and add to it the function of mouse over and mouse click. Let's run the application and see that the effects are working correctly. This done we will now create our minimize, maximize and close buttons. Let's start by copying code from our current button and pasting it into a new file. Create a new file called top bar button and paste the code that we copied previously. Let's change the ID of this R button and replace all objects that had the old name. Change the icon address. Set the button width to 35 and height to 35 and icon height to 16 and width to 16. We can change the preview to a width of 35 and height also 35.
Go to the main QML file and change the button to the new button that we just created. See that the button does not appear. Let's change its width and height to explicit dimensions. Done this the button will appear correctly. Copy and paste that same button twice into the row BTNs and add a different ID for each button. We will now change the icons to the maximize icon and to the close icon. See what's happening in error in the maximize button the icon has a distortion, but first let's go to the toggle button and put its visibility as hidden as well as the other buttons, do this to avoid rendering errors. See that the error of deformation of the icon continues, this is because I defined wrong dimensions for this icon, just put width as 16 and height also as 16. Now run our application we have the buttons of toggle menu, of minimize, maximize and restore working. To finish this video let's change the color of the close button to a dark pink when it is clicked. In the next video I will teach you how to customize the main menu buttons. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos and leave your like. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. See you in the next video.